Hello everybody, welcome back to another Train Some World 4 video. We're back on the Goblin Line. Of course we're back on the Goblin Line, why wouldn't we be? Uh, the London Overground, the Gloucester Bloke, the Barking Line. Uh, yeah, obviously known as, well, the Goblin Line. And yeah, we're in the 710, let's get out of uh, photo mode and get set up. We're also going to give this a go HUDless. Um, I feel like I can probably do it HUDless fairly well. Fairly well, that is. Um, so yeah, I thought we'll, we'll give it a go. Uh, I mean, what is the worst that could happen? Uh, yeah, that's all good. DPWS and AWS operational. Let's quickly get out and check our lights. Uh, just to make sure they are working all right. Yeah, that looks uh, that's good to me. We've sort of gone for a bit of a rush hour. Uh, setting as well, so yeah, just gone 5 p.m. Yeah, everybody will be leaving work and making their way home. Get the uh, defibrillator. There goes another service. It's one of those routes where it's it's quite easy to sit on it for hours on end. Like I would like to do maybe a stream on here, where we're just sort of sat on it, we're going backwards and forth. There's one annoying thing about this route is because it's got the self-closing doors, which is a realistic thing. It's to keep the air, the air con temperature inside the train, well, at a good level. Um, the thing is, when the doors self-close, in, you get interlocked. The bill light goes off the um, body side indicator light or external orange hazard light, however you want to call it, um, which shouldn't happen. But apparently, it's just a limitation of the. Uh, the game. Oh, there's tons of little bits and pieces you can do there. Right, uh, we are good to go. So now we will close the doors. Uh, right, and yeah, then we'll get going. We have got interlock. Uh, let's take the DRA off because otherwise we're not going to get very far. And let's go. Hopefully. There we go. Right, we are off. As we leave Gospel Oak. So you've got Gospel Oak, Upper Holloway, Crouch Hill, and then after that it's Harringay Green Lane, Harringay Green Lane, South Tottenham, Black Horse Road, uh, Wolvenstow Queen Road, uh, Leighton Midland Road, Leightonstone High Road, Wanstead Park, Woodgrange Park, Barking, Barking Riverside, I think. Yeah, off we go. So we'll be able to get up to 40. There's another, there's a Terminator there waiting to get into uh, the platform. Do a little brake test. The step brakes as well. The step brakes, so weird having step brakes on this train. So why are they step brakes? Get that up. Goes up again quite shortly. 55, I believe, actually, so it's quite quick this part of the route. Yeah, 55 miles per hour for uh, for us. Which well, yeah, is relatively quick. Uh, I mean, this is probably, uh, well, apart from Barking to Barking Riverside, one of the fastest parts of the route. Just getting used to the brakes, there. it's just so weird that. Way you've got step brakes, step brakes, but then percentage for power. It's just bizarre. And on we go. So, yeah, this is the class 710 of Entra. And as we come up to our first station, sort of Upper Holloway. I was trying to work out what they would, um, what sort of brake settings they would use in real life. Would they go into brake step three on like a norm, or just keep it brake step one and two? Because I mean the timetable is relatively tight. Well, this is Upper Holloway. 
it was still 55 miles per hour, or that will drop down to 30. Uh, basically, just before that bridge, it's a bit of a hidden speedboard. You don't really see it until, um, well, it's just hidden behind a gantry post. Now, they always close the doors a few seconds before departure. Because you sort of want to be on the move by the time it says. Let's watch it leaving as well. It does sound quite nice. I'm not sure that lags about that, that's a bit weird. We're on the Xbox Series X for this, it should be running, well, crisp. Yeah, so the 30 is just before the bridge, but the speedboard is hidden behind the gantry post. You sort of try and make, yeah, you know, make some of the speed. Try and make the most of it, and come down to 30. There it is, just there, hidden behind it. Also, slightly knocked over as well. The 30 board. Imagine that's a little realistic quirk of it, like the one on Birmingham Cross City, which is just knocked over completely. So 30 miles an hour as we come up to Crouch Hill. I think it stays as 30 for quite some time. It's, I think it's still South Tottenham and maybe 30. I'm still sort of learning the speed limits. I know this part of the route's sort of the slower bit. Now it's 30. Be careful coming into uh, Crouch Hill. Yeah, we're getting about 45 FPS. I mean, it's okay, but I don't know why it's not a solid 60. We just came down to 20 there. Which is a bit sort of. Yeah. That sort of could be better. Well, this is Crouch Hill. And then after this is uh, yeah, Haringey Green Lanes, I believe. That's the next one along. Yeah. 18 pass. So we're still on time. We're actually doing fairly well at the moment. There it is, so the uh, full coach 710. Yeah, so, well, just about fits on the platform. And I keep pressing that button so they don't self close because yeah, then they interlock, which is just like, no. And now I'll start closing them. That's right, so still 30 miles per hour. We get to try this on um, direct current at some point if we haven't already on video. Get it on the juice rail. You get a nice big open window at the front. So no complaining that it's a tiny little window you have to look at. It's a fairly, fairly big window. Up to 30 miles per hour. Yeah, it's like a low, yeah, low adhesion warning there. It's a common place where you get um, lethal. Nice little tunnel there. Lots of graffiti as well. I mean, that's just such a realistic thing about these sort of inner city routes. It's just graffiti. I mean, there's actually vandal vandalism everywhere. Like, go, go to London on the train, or just any major city in Europe. There's always you know, graffiti everywhere, even on the trains. Sad as it is. Yeah, this bit's 30. Even though it's literally just straight, it's 30. It's a bit like, come on, let's get going. And you've got the East Coast Main Line, which, if we're lucky, we might see uh, some AO. Oh, that perfect timing. That is a 7. Oh, no, 801. 
and it's the full timetable the East Coast men, I don't know what Ellen they are. And Thameslink as we come up to Harringay Green Lanes. Sounds like a nice place, doesn't it? Harringay Green Lanes. I mean maybe yeah, once upon a time. I don't know, anybody live in this area? What's it like? There was like some sort of platform extension here, but then it sort of never materialised. It's all of the um, concrete pillars, which looks suspiciously like, you know, the platform one would have. You know, I mean, you can even see like a platform over there, and it's just like a bridge. My bit used to be much longer, much more important. Well, oh. oh, people are getting off and then getting back on. They just can't make their mind up, can they? Or maybe they're trying. Maybe they're playing with the doors. They're like, "Oh, shall we see what the sensors are like?" Right, you've got to be on or off now. The doors are closing. No screwing around. Oh, that was close. Right, let's go. It is South Tottenham next. And yeah, to be honest, we're actually keeping up the timetable quite nicely. I mean, we're not really going too quick, we're not going too slow, we're sort of just, well, a gentle ride basically. A comfortable ride for the uh, for our lovely fair paying customers, or fair, fair paying passengers. Well, let's be honest, it's, it's the overground. I'd imagine. 25% of people on the train probably don't have a ticket or this haven't tapped on. Happens too often nowadays, people fare evading. More needs to be done. But yeah, South Tottenham next where we sort of then turn off up to the left, I think there's a neutral section as well. Also, after South Tottenham, I think there's a, the 20 mile per hour limit over one of the canals, or one of the waterways. There's the warning for the neutral section coming up. Well, it might actually be a slightly different one to. Yeah, possibly. A long way go, though. But yeah, what does everyone think of the route, though? Has it sort of reached your expectations? Is it a bit like, oh, I don't like that? Yeah, sort of. Yeah, how do you think it is? I was just wondering why there was a 30 sign there, even though there was no tracks joining up or anything. Maybe it was just a reminder that it is 30. It is really quite slow along this bit. It's like, you just want to speed up, but you can't. Like, I don't understand why it is 30 along here. Like, why is it 30? Someone... Expect, hang on, there's another warning for a neutral section there. We didn't, but we didn't go through a neutral section. Oh, unless... Hang on, unless that's meant... Um, I don't know. So unless that's meant to be... Um, here's that 20. <clears throat> unless it's meant to be for the one which comes up on the left. Like all the way, you sort of got the crossover there, right in the middle of the uh, station. It's it's very much like a, it's got a cross city feel. This route, they're not the fastest. Stations are close to one another. You're in the middle of the city, or sort of in the middle of the city. It's just got yeah, nice, nice vibe to it. Looks like you barely fit in here at South Tottenham. Look at that, barely. Cool. And it speeds up a little bit now, which is which is good. And you've got that 20 there as well between here and Black Horse Road, I believe. Yeah. 
And we're still on time. We're still keeping to the timetable. Uh, which is good. What's the wiper like on this? We haven't actually tried that. It's okay. It would do. I haven't done rain with this shit out. Actually, yeah, they might as well close. We've only got 15 seconds. The trouble is here, they shouldn't be interlocking. When the door's shut, they shouldn't be interlocking. That's the uh, that's the only downside to those doors closing. I mean, it's cool that they self-close, but they shouldn't interlock. Yeah, here's a neutral section, so we are in coast at the moment. I don't know if it actually does... Work the neutral section. Oh, I think it does. Yeah, I heard like the sort of fans all sort of going off. And let's go. Let's get up to forty-five. Although in re readiness for the uh, twenty over the, um, which I can only assume is a weak bridge. Which actually wasn't too far up. So we won't speed up too much. It's not here, it's a bit, it's one of these bridges. So we're going over another railway here. Lots of different railways you cross over. That's what we basically just cross, well, we cir circumnavigate round. Um, North London, so lots of different lines uh, intersecting us and joining up with us. So it's quite a um, not heavy freight route, but there's a lot of freight on this route um, because it's a, just very it's very useful. I mean, coming along this route, you connect basically the Great Eastern Main Line, or sort of the Dagenham Dock area, sort of all the ports sort of down the East End. You can connect that with with you know, the Great Western Main Line and all the different main lines really easily. Well, and the North London Line, the North London Line slash Goblin are just very useful cut throughs. A bit. As I said, as I sort of described it, it's sort of the M25 of railways in London. That sort of circular links all sort of the main main railways. Got the wetlands here as well, which is the, sort of the only bit of uh, countryside, not, well, not even countryside, but sort of greenery on here. So, yeah, so this is going to say, I mean, this is literally my first run, Hudless, and it's going quite well. It's one of those routes I've picked up really quickly because I'm interested in it. I probably shouldn't have jinxed it saying it's going really well. Right, this is Black Horse Road. Oh, actually, we did lose a bit of time there. Maybe it doesn't sort of factor in that 20 limit. Have to be sort of extra quick, but safe. And as you can see from the um, DMI there, uh, or whatever the screen, I've um, set it to May. Because we don't really want to do this route in sort of March time, do we? Because otherwise it'll be... That was less nice looking. Well, that's in a hundred percent. Not sure what sort of the professional driving policy for this train would be. Probably not whack it into a hundred percent, but we did sort of. We didn't whack it straight into a hundred straight away. 
And I'm trying to think of the next speed change. I think it does stay at 45 for quite a while. Uh, there's definitely a 40 through Wanstead Park. Although that's going the other way. I'm not sure about if you're going this way. So we'll be on the lookout for that. There is a shed. Again, it's yeah, fairly freight heavy, this room. So it's uh, Walthamstow Queen Road. Uh, yeah, Walthamstow Queen Road next. Walthamstow Queen's Road, yeah. And detail on this route is relatively. Yeah, it's alright, it's decent. I mean, there probably could be a bit more veg next to the. Uh, sort of within the cess there. Sort of going through that um, cutting. A few more, you know, reeds and stuff going up the walls. And yeah, overall, it's not too bad. I think I still think that one of the best looking route stuff Tell Games have done is Sol Salzburg Rosenheim. It looks so good that route. It, it's just like, what? <laughs> so good. This is a Walthamstow Queens Road. And next up here is Leighton Midland Road. Still 45 as well. We are, we've lost time. I, d I don't know how we've lost it. It's like, it, yeah, it doesn't factor in the 20. That's the only way I can think we've lost time. It's from that 20 limit. Okay, we'll try and sort of be quick. <laughs> yeah, get ourselves moving. And you've got a nice mix as well, sort of within sort of the fort, you know, you've got sort of the concrete uh, there, and then you've got sort of back to classic sleepers. But there should, I did, someone mentioned it, and I was like, oh yeah, there probably should be a bit more track clutter, you know, scrap rails uh, within the, um, within the forefoot, and just a bit, a bit more clutter within the, um, Within the tracks, within sort of the four foot, within the six foot on the sets. Oh my god, another freight! Blimey. I mean, if you, if you like your freight trains, this is a route for you. So much of it. This is probably one of my favourite parts of the room, where you're sort of quite high above, it's, you can actually see sort of out either side. Oh, this is Leighton Midland Road. So I don't really want to be coming into it too quick. But the good thing is though, even if you are a little bit late on this route, you get 10 minutes either end. So, you know, at most you can be eight, nine minutes late and still have a couple of minutes at the end to sort of get ready to go back the other way. So it's a fairly straightforward route to stay on time. Or at least to get to the end and still have time to at least go and make a quick cup of tea and then, you know, work the train back. You're not sort of like, get right to the end, oh, two minutes, back we go. It's not like that. I made up a little bit of time there. We get those doors shut relatively quickly. Let's watch this one leaving. the AC sounds. I personally haven't checked out the DC sounds yet. That'd be cool to see what they're like. Yeah, so Leighton Stone High Road next. I 
I suppose one thing about this room is, DLC-wise, you can't really do anything. Um, unless you maybe you chuck a 378 in there, but that wouldn't really run many of the services. It depends really when this one's actually set, which now it's Barking Riverside, so this is 20, 23 probably. Um, so yeah, it'll be a bit, it's a bit tricky DLC-wise, it's sort of a route where you can't really do DLC for. Unless you backdated it maybe to Silverlink with a 150 or even like a 172. That's really the only thing you can do on here. Or maybe extend it and add some of the North London line in. That's another idea. I don't really know yet what they could do for DLC on this. That's really the only thing I can... Well, the only two, uh, three things I can think of is either an extension, which adds in some of the North London line, which it would be cool, but I doubt they'd do an extension. A 378, which, again, I can't, it would be cool, but then it doesn't really fit it. Or, yeah, backdating it to something like Silverlink days, where you've got a 150 on here. That would be cool. Right, uh, this is Leightonstone High Road, so the next station stop is here at Wanstead Park. Is that another train? Yeah, another train on the other side there. It's slightly more sort of quicker on this bit. So we've got 15 minutes now to Barking Riverside. Yeah, it's just a very it's a very easy train to drive, but I would say it's slightly more challenging than others for one reason, and that's the fact you've got percentage as power and steps brakes. That's the only thing that makes it that slightly more bit challenging than other multiple units. Say like the 700 for example. But it's not hard in any way. Sort of get used to it, I suppose. Right, so does it come down to 40 on on the uh, on this line? So it's 40 through Wanstead Park on the uh, on the other line towards Gospel Oak. This is really coming. Cool. That's what's high above the houses here. It's it's quite a cool part of the room. and quite a nice gap as well between here and uh, Wanstead Park, being just over a mile. Yeah, there is a 40. It's like 40, where are you? Or maybe not. Alright, might just be 40 if you're going the other way then. Yeah, I can't see any 40 for... Oh, this is a tight platform. Look at this one. It's just about fit in. Oh, hang on, no, there is a 40. But just after the platform. Yeah, Wanstead Park, which we literally barely fit in the platform. Look at that, I mean, to me, that, the, the, you know, the rear cab is hanging off. Then we can't go any further forward. We're we'll bang on the stop marker. As there is a 40. as well. I'm not sure if there's a hotkey for that. No, I don't think there is. Oh, there is. Control B. I don't know, control it. No idea. Probably not. Limited clearance signs. Like to see it. Because they are everywhere on real life railways. I don't think there's any no refuge signs, so I've never seen any of them on, on the game. 
Well, I'm still assuming it's 40. I haven't seen a 45, but well, here we go. That'll be for, yeah, 45 again. So we sort of, sort of start, slow, start going down now a little bit. Yeah, over the main line, it comes down to 30 across these points. And then it's not too far along to Woodgrange Park. So I think that one there is the Great Eastern Main Line, that's what we've just crossed over. And don't worry, that red light is not for us. And yeah, Woodgrange Park is just here, and then from here, I mean, it's just Barking and Barking Riverside. That's it. So about sort of 10 minutes or so. So it's just a, uh, just a neat little route, you know, it's the, a full end-to-end you know, -end run. You can sit on the same train all day, just going backwards and forth. And yeah, 40 minutes from one end to the other. Not too shabby, not too long, not too short. There we are, with Grange Park. Time, which is good. I mean, yeah, got to 60 after barking. Not for long, though. Right, let's get the doors shut. And let's go. Slowly. Bad horn either. Beats basically every German train horn. I suppose a cool service to do on here would be following a freight train or doing the freight train and then following a slow service. We will do freight at some point on here. I think we'll try and get a thumbnail on the uh, bridge up to. Barking Riverside. On we go. I don't think it stays at 45 most of the way. I could, actually, I could be wrong. I think it does stay at 45 for the duration. Or does it come down to 30? There's not a 30, is there? I feel like that'll be a bit too slow, 30. So I'm keeping an eye out. So we're at around, I mean, it's a relatively straightforward route to learn hardness because we're going so sort of, sort of slow that even if there's a speed change, a station coming up, you still have time to stop for it. Yeah, 45 still. Also, have to see if there's any um, services which terminate in the bay platform at Barking. Terminating platform of parking. So there might be like one or two sort of early morning. Yes, yeah, so we get to go up and over. Which is this, I think that uh, below us is the district line and the Hammersmith and City line. Which uh, the latter terminates at Barking. Now approaching Barking Station. That's right to the end of the platform. Probably the longest platform there is on the route. As I've seen, it's a mainline station as well. We get to go right to the end. Stop car marker. No, it is just there. That's the one. Well, this is parking. 
which is the weather line used to terminate and terminate over in this platform over here if it lets us go over there yeah, it used to terminate on this sort of forgotten lonely platform here nowadays it does not it continues on yeah then we go on to the quickest part of the line for our little sort of sprint over to Barking Riverside door shut Let's go. Leaving Barking behind. I wonder if we would ever see Barking again. Maybe like a C2C line. That would be cool. Or even like the District Line or Hammersmith and City. You never know. If we, actually, if we did get another tube route, what tube route would you want to see? Subsurface? Deep level? I oh, wouldn't mind sound like the District Line. Yeah, it's at 60, 50, and then 40. Let me speed up though. Up to 60. But yeah, great to have another route in London though. So obviously, sort of the more regular, well, more for, uh, the sort of more recent releases are all sort of being well north. So it's good to sort of have a back, sort of back, back south. Got a preliminary route indicator there. Preliminary. Yeah, on we go. Over there, there's a 50 coming onto the flyover. And then, yeah, 40 possibly once we're on the flyover. And it does come down, I know that for sure. See the flyer, flyover coming up. So you've got one for a 40, so we'll just come down to 40. Doesn't really make too much of a difference. And then up to Barking at Riverside, which is then Journey's End. So another nice, successful journey along the uh, along the Goblin. Yeah, there's the 50, and then the 40 must be slightly after. Look at how steep, look at the steep gradient there, sort of then going up onto the flyover. There's the 40 there, sort of snuck up on that signal gantry. Here we are. So this takes us all the way to Barking Riverside Station. Of course, we sort of swoop our way up. And also a place where we could try and get a bit of a photo as well. Uh, get another one there as well. Bit of rotation, maybe. And yeah, maybe enough one as well. Look at me, treat, treating everybody to different screenshots. <clears throat> oh, I quite like that last one. Up we go. Again, yeah, pretty steep up here. And I think it was 25 into Barking Riverside, although really you want to be getting 15. TPWS getting set off and getting upset. Yeah, just a, a really just pleasant journey end to end. And as I said, it's not too long, it's not too short, it's just 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 right. I know there's not sort of service variety wise. I mean there isn't really service variety, it's just gospel to barking and vice versa, with the extra additional layers if you've got the DLC. But then 
that's realistic. I said at the AWS sound, is that completely correct for this train? Well, it should, should be sort of the newer tone to it. See, that signal there looks slightly harder to, disting uh, to distinguish between a red and a yellow. I mean, of course, that's red. That's quite strong red, but they're sort of the colours of, I don't know, seem a bit faded. Little toot as we got the um, orange army there. And yeah, this is Barking Riverside, which is Journey's End, just after, well, just over 40 minutes. And so that was fairly straightforward in Hudless. I'll say give it a go once you get the route. <coughs> and obviously, thanks to uh, Dovetail for giving us a bit of early access to uh, show it to you guys. I love playing Hardless, so playing Hardless is just awesome. Well, we don't actually need to go all the way up to the buffer on this one, it's about here. There we go. Break step three. Right side door release. DRA on. Um, and yeah, I suppose we'll then shut that down. Short that down, uh, do that to off, that go to on, and also something important, the blind. Put that down. Slowly go down. There we go. Cool, and we'll have to see how long this one has here before it sort of heads off. There goes the next one. So probably about 15 minutes or so, 10-15 minutes, if that one's just going. That really wasn't too bad. I mean, you get the odd bit where we probably went up to about 31. But I think, you know, like, wow. Return to free roam. Capital also comes on automatically. I don't know if it then goes off automatically. Well, one thing, actually, I haven't mentioned on this train. I don't think you can change the PIS manually, which I'm quite disappointed about. Yeah, 18 hour free, so yeah, 15 minutes, which is just a good amount of time to go get a cup of tea and get something to eat quickly. Before you then make your way back. Yeah, let's have a little little look. Let's probably put the key in again. Because I mean it is quite disappointing if you can't change the PIS. I don't think there is a way. PWS and AWS operational. Station panel. Uh, no, not that. Main menu. PIS. Priority message, that could be sort of the one. Yeah, I, I don't think you can change it, which is quite disappointing. Um, because it's sort of, yeah, something which used to be in the game, and then all of a sudden, oh, we're not going to do it anymore. Um, yeah, so a bit disappointing that well, we can't change that. Um, but yeah, uh, that is going to be it for me. Hopefully, everybody has enjoyed it. Let's just go down the lift, because we can. Oh, got a fire extinguisher as well. My lift. Doors open. Lift coming down. Doors closing. Goodbye, train. Down we go. Um, but yeah. Ground floor. Ground floor. Lift uh, right, yeah. Uh, that is coming from me. Hopefully, everybody has enjoyed it. Uh, links can be found in the usual places Discord, PayPal, merch store. Apart from that, thanks to Dovetail for giving us a key shirt off, and I hope to see you in the next one. See you all. Take care. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.